take his jab off him, he got a decent jab, take it off him. Your opponent has a nasty jab and your coach is screaming, take it off him. What do you do? Here's a few suggestions, courtesy of Anthony Joshua, who lately has been developing a very active or proactive long guard game, not only to defend the jab, but to take it away altogether. So here we see an option for active jab defense that is unique to the long guard. When Joshua's opponents try to jab over top of that low extended lead, he defends with a lift parry. Of course, should your opponent try to sneak their jab underneath that extended lead hand, you also have the option of a drop parry, but we're going to focus on the lift right now. Note the shape of Joshua's arm as he executes this lift. We've covered this already in the advanced elbow blocks video, but one of the things I love most about this active defense of the jab is that it creates proactive defense for the cross by placing the elbow in the lane that the cross must travel through. It's a two-in-one defense. You get all the benefits of this active jab defense with this proactive cross coverage. And here it is again. Joshua literally defended this cross with his eyes closed because his preferred lift parry came with built-in cross coverage. Along with these active parries, Joshua's long guard gives him proactive jab defense, which is all about stopping the punch before it's even started, usually by controlling space. Since we've already talked quite a bit about closing punch lanes and creating defensive traffic in our business hours video, I don't want to belabor the point, but here are some examples of Joshua putting that theory into practice to take his opponent's jab away. Here we see every time Ruiz tries to get his jab going and initiate some offense, Joshua just gets in his way. He uses that long extended lead to close the jab lane, keep the hand busy, or even trap it in place always making it hard for the opponent to get that hand working, but always being ready to transition to an active jab defense as needed. So as we touched on a bit in the last section, AJ loves to use his long guard both to actively defend and proactively take away his opponent's cross. So not only can we lift the cross away as shown previously, but in situations where the hand is held higher than the incoming cross, we can drop it down, stuffing the incoming punch and leaving the opponent feeling a little exposed with your hand on top of theirs. Of course, you don't need to mess with these lift or drop parries if that's not your thing, because even extending the hand straight into the path of the punch is often enough to deflect it. But again, one of the keys to AJ's defense is that he does not sit around and wait for his opponent to throw the cross. He defends it proactively. Here we see Joshua deftly roll the hook, then in anticipation of the cross, as part of that classic 3-2 combination, Joshua places traffic in the cross lane immediately as he comes up out of the roll. Here he is again using that long guard lift parry as proactive defense, shutting down the lane and denying the cross even after being hit with a left hook. Again, Joshua proactively closes the cross lane after Klitschko gets off with his left hook. Here's one final example of Joshua applying this long guard proactive defense to take both the jab and cross away to cover his exit after landing a power shot. So the jab and the cross are not the only punches that you can shut down using defensive traffic and hand traps. Quite the opposite. In fact, anytime you busy a hand with probing long guard activity, or you block a lane, or you extend to the end of that lane to trap the hand with glove on glove contact, you make it very difficult for the opponent to throw any punch with that hand. This makes long guard traffic quite useful for shutting down what Keith Thurman calls collision punches. Throw the punch that is what I call the collision punch. But you the collision punch. Oh, you did, okay. You know, if fighters move this way, you throw the punch in there. And they're moving in this direction, boom. You Aim the power punch in the direction your opponent's already moving. You don't have to think about no crazy combo. Joshua likes to run most of his offense from long range, from the outside, and he uses long guard traffic to do so, diffusing bombs and denying collision punches to escape bad positions, move laterally, and get off the ropes when he needs to. Of course, defensive traffic is not foolproof. But unless your opponent is ready and willing to engage you and beat you in a hand fight, they have very few options here. They can't punch directly through the traffic you've created, and should they try to sneak a shot over top or underneath of your long guard, you'll have the lift and drop parry ready to go. I'm a big fan of Joshua, but I have to say he does not have much 
of an inside game. Or maybe he just has no real interest in a prolonged inside engagement, which is fine because most of his talents and preferred weapons are found at long range. You will find Joshua punching up close, exploding with short range combinations, and sometimes he'll even use controls and wedges uh, for spacing. But you'll rarely see him in a prolonged inside engagement where he's looking to take or make strong positions and work from there. Usually it's one explosive combo at max and then he ties up and waits for a break. So how did AJ become one of the premier heavyweights in boxing with no inside fighting skills to speak of? Well, his secret is simple. Joshua expertly covers this hole in his game using the long guard. Or to be more precise, he uses strong hand controls, wedges, and posts, all of which are readily available with the arms held out in a long guard position anytime his opponent tries to close the gap. And if Joshua can't keep you in control and held at bay, he'll transition right into a tie-up grabbing a collar tie or overhook or underhook, depending on how the opponent has entangled themselves in his long guard traffic. AJ fans, please have mercy, but I must point out another flaw in Joshua's game, and that is he tends to stand in front of his opponents too long. He stands still, waiting around for something to happen, and usually that something is nothing good. And before you start shitting on this dumb gringo in the comments section, just know that I'm not the only person who says this. Don't wait on him. Now you're waiting on him, mate. You're waiting on him again. You're letting him attack you and then you're trying to get away too late. As long as Joshua doesn't stand in front of Pulev too long to get timed, then he's fine. So how do we address this problem? How can Joshua stay safe and keep his opponents on guard when he's not ready to commit to offense? How can Joshua recover while also preventing his opponents from getting comfortable? getting into a rhythm, getting a sense for his timing, and initiating their offense. Unsurprisingly, given the theme of this video, the answer is long guard, and Joshua's long guard gives him two great options. The first is defensive traffic, closing for business, as we've said in a previous video. By investing a small amount of energy to create defensive traffic, Joshua can reduce his opponent's punch output, influencing both their attack type and attack timing, and making it much less likely that he gets caught while taking a breath. Another option to pass time responsibly and take a breath or two is to use energy efficient feints, and the long guard gives you tons of energy efficient feinting options. Extending the lead hand in that long guard position makes your subtle full body feints much more effective, creating a lot more movement with the arm and hand to shake up your opponent. And this, along with the fact that your hand is now creeping ever closer, makes your feint a little more threatening than say a foot or head feint where the hand stayed glued to your head still and far away. So is the long guard the ultimate boxing technique? An impregnable defense with no weaknesses? No, of course not, because that doesn't exist. As we can see here, everything can be countered. And if you haven't developed your hand fighting game to a high level, or you don't quite understand distance as well as you should, or you haven't really got a grasp on elbow flipping and drop parries and lift parries, leave this for later. But it is a useful tool that's worth developing whenever you're ready to come back to it. Maybe in a year, maybe in five years. But even if you're not ready to use the long guard, or even ready to begin developing it, you should be aware that it exists. And when you are ready, we'll be here. So like and subscribe for more videos like these.